Islam, peace and greetings to you all. I rise giving all praise to Allah and the highest of honors to his holy and divine prophet, Noble Drew Ali. I extend those honors to the harbinger and forerunner, Marcus Mosiah Garvey. I extend honors to all true and divine prophets, and I extend honors to you all, for when man honors man, he honors his father, God Allah. The year is 2013 in the month of September at the making of this video. For decades, we have let academia dictate to us in ways that we were ever unaware of. They, especially those claiming that they are black or African American, have perpetuated the European slave label of black among our people by teaching that they are in fact what the Europeans labeled us in slavery. Make no doubt about it, a great battle is on and Allah has armed me with the scimitar and the shield to fight for the honor of my forefathers, the founders of the world's first civilization and divine creed, who never saw themselves as a black people, but was given this label by another who came much, much later in human history. Afrocentrism is a disease that has to be eradicated from our thinking men and women, for if allowed to fester, it will corrupt every new mind waking up into consciousness as that has been the cycle for decades now. For every generation that Afrocentric scholars and other groups claiming that they are black have taught this, our people have sunk deeper into the depths of ignorance and immorality and decay outside of scholastic circles and these other groups. If you do not believe this, go into the neighborhoods where our people inhabit across this nation and give me a differing report. Most of these brothers that support these Afrocentrists are also part of Greek letter frats, and we in the MST of A get the most pushback from these people. They were around causing mischief in the prophets in Garvey's time, and we see them here and now doing the same thing today. So let me read what Afrocentric scholar Renoko Rashidi had to say, obviously, in response to a series of videos that I have put forth, one even mentioning him for falsely displaying people painted with black paint and saying that they are a black people. He says, Family, I had not planned to, but the level of ignorance among our people is so great that I feel the need. The Moors were black people who converted to Islam and led the movements of African people from Northwest Africa into the Iberian Peninsula in the 8th century. They brought light and learning into a dark European world. The Moors are described in European literature as black as crow. The word Moor comes from the Greek and Latin mortals or morti. Terms that literally means black or scorched. It is similar to the Greek word Ethiopian, which meant people burnt by the sun, aka black people. At a certain point, the term more became the term used by Europeans to denote black people in Europe. That is my great disappointment with YouTube. We act like it is a definitive source of learning. YouTube is a great resource, but much of what is on it is about as valid as a $3 bill. Wake up and think, black people. We have brains and minds for a reason, and they are terrible things to waste. The best source on the subject is Golden Age of the Moor by Ivan Van Sertima. It is a book that I helped edit. If you can't find that one, get Renoko Rashidi's Black Star over Europe. Stop repeating foolishness and do some serious research before you make ridiculous statements. I want to stress what our Prophet Noble Drew Ali said again when he said that the only form of slavery that you have now is mental slavery and if you are not careful your own brother will put you right back into slavery. Prophet Noble Drew Ali taught us that we were Moors and that we are not black people. Something that we knew Moors in this day and time have proven without a shadow of a doubt and yet you have what appears to be an accredited scholar saying the opposite. Again, this all boils down to who's wrong and who's right. Like it or not, it is what it is. Unlike Mr. Rashidi, I do not need a cheerleading fan base as his thread highlighted. I just need the facts. The second thing that I want to note is this. His last statement is claiming that we, namely myself, are making ridiculous statements. Obviously he means when we are stating that more does not mean black and that 
there is no such thing as a black people. This is essentially saying that Prophet Noble Drew Ali was wrong with what he told us and that he, Renoko Rashidi, was right all because, by the way, he did write books and edit books dealing with the Moors and so that he knows for certain that more means black and to state anything otherwise is ridiculous. The people that agree and share the same exact sentiments exactly as Rashidi are locked in the fallacy called argument from inertia. Also stay the course. The fallacy that it is necessary to continue on a mistaken course of action even after discovering it is mistaken because changing course would mean admitting one's decision or one's leader one's faith or teacher was wrong and all one's effort expense and sacrifice was for nothing and for them this is simply unthinkable this is the mindset of those who literally believe that they are a black people they have fought under this slave label all of their lives and refuse to give it up now although they have never their teachers and leaders have never their scholars have never ever once proved that we are a black people nor that this slave label, black, this German word, does not derive from the pale skin nations of Europe because they simply cannot. These ones, when you bring up Prophet Noble Drew Ali, they will say that your comments are coming from a dogmatic religious mindset. Then when you present the proofs from empirical, contemporaneous documentation, however, instead of accepting the facts, they are always ignored and a completely new set of arguments are made. And when you chop that argument down, they scream, you're conquered by religion. Go figure. The next point that I want to touch on is when the Afrocentric scholar, Renoko Rashidi, tries to make it appear that if you are getting any information off of YouTube, you are missing out somehow. And though it is a great tool or resource, it is largely invalid. That is akin to being in a library and saying that I've read 20 books in this library and they all had misinformation so every book in this library has false information while trying to get you to buy my books at the same time and now that's pretty slick the people that listen to these types they simply are in the same position that they claim religious people are in and that is they need someone to think for them if Renoko Rashidi, Ivan Van Sertima, Chancellor Williams, Dr. Clark, Dr. Ben Yakinen and even Elijah Muhammad or Noble Drew Ali for that matter says it's right then it must be right if I say that Prophet Noble Drew Ali was right I simply show and prove it and ask you to refute it it is not what you know it is what you can show and prove and Mr. Rashidi has never shown any etymological trace that proves that the word more means black he has shown in the book the golden age of the more where he referenced his Afrocentric fan base but when one simply reads his and Wayne B. Chandler's portion of the book, they are using descriptions that the pale skin nations of Europe gave to our people. His main premise is Greek and Roman sources, as you can see on his status above, and he is just simply wrong in this regard, and we are going to show and prove just now. In the book The Golden Age of the Moor, he would cite several scholars and authors, but never once gave an etymological breakdown other than what other European men believed the word to mean. All he gives you are the cognates. In language, a cognate is simply a word that, though it is not the original meaning or the original word, through years of usage, it has become generally accepted as the meaning of the word, sort of like the word boxing. The original title for boxing is pugilism. However, we have grown to calling it boxing, so now, the word boxing is a cognate for the word pugilism, and boxing is generally the only word that people know. Personal examples of this can be found with words like Negro. We were never called Negroes before the pale skin nations of Europe called us such, and yet, we, being stripped of our nationality and religion on this land, which stripped us of our history, lost sight of this fact and accepted this slave labor. Ethiopian which Rashidi, like many others, falsely believe it to mean people burnt by the sun, as you can see, cited in his quote above in this presentation, was once a cognate for Moors, and also it was a slave label 
used by the Europeans on this land to describe us. About Ethiopia meaning black people burnt by the sun, we will debunk that claim shortly. Being that Renoko Rashidi is not an etymologist, let us give you the etymology of the word. Firstly, I want to say that I am using the online etymological dictionary which is a compilation of over 21 primary or principal sources and 53 additional sources. You don't go to an electrician to fix your plumbing problem. It reads for the word more. North African, Berber, late 14th century, from Old French, more. From medieval Latin, morus, from Latin, morus, inhabitant of Mauritania, Northwest Africa, a region now corresponding to northern Algeria and Morocco, from Greek, Moros, perhaps a native name or else cognate with Moros, black. But this adjective only appears in late Greek and may as well be from the people's name as the reverse. Being a dark people in relation to Europeans, their name in the Middle Ages was a synonym for Negro. Later, 16th to 17th century, used indiscriminately of Muslims. Persians, Arabs, etc., but especially those in India. What this is saying to you is that the word Moros does not come to mean black until late Greek, that is the Koine or Alexandrian language, and it is no doubt we get the labeling of our people as black people because of this shift in language. At the end of this etymological definition, it says that more would be used indiscriminately for all Muslims as it was the Moors that advanced civilization through Islam. Another point that I want to note is that from an earlier etymological source, we have a variation in meaning. In the New International Encyclopedia, 2nd edition, volume 16, dating back to 1918, we read, Moors, and it gives you all of the different breakdowns, and it says dark or perhaps from their original native name. This shows two critical aspects of the etymology of the word and that is, according to several earlier sources, Moros means dark and not black. Secondly, it specifically lays out that perhaps this was the native name of the people. Modern day academia has concealed much from you. From this, the Europeans would call our people black or more. Why would they call us black or black if more already means black? Think people, just think. Your scholars cannot reason a thing out for you. You must do that on your own. Next, we have to find the Greek word for black, being that the professional etymologists, who have 74 sources at their disposal, could not prove at all that the word more means black. And if it did, then why in the world would it be used indiscriminately for Persians, Arabs, Hindus, etc.? The Greek word for black is melanos. Let us look at what melanos says in the same etymological dictionary. We see it in the word forming element melano, meaning black, from Greek melano, a form of melis, the genitive of melanos, being black, dark, and murky and it says see melanin. And if you review melanin under a microscope, it is a murky dark brown that appears to give a black appearance, as melanose also means anything dark or murky, not necessarily black. As I have pointed out in my video showing and proving that black according to science means death, and we'll revisit in this presentation, Homer, the Greek poet, to where we find the name Atheops, to where we get the name Ethiopian from, describes the people of his Iliad as having embrowned visages. This would be the oldest known descriptive given by a European that this researcher could find. No man has black skin. This is just obvious. Renoko Rashidi's claims in this matter are non sequitur and an overgeneralization, aka trying to fit a square peg in a round hole. So now that we see that melanos is the Greek word for black and that black being a cognate for moros came during late Greek, we can easily conclude that moros, the Greek name for more, which they would have had to have saw all of our people as, 
did not mean black but that it came to mean black by the Europeans at a much later period. And now we have simply accepted this and rejected historical facts in this regard. People simply skipped a part of the etymology that says, may as well be from the people's name is the reverse. You people are still asleep. Wake up. In my video, are all so-called black people more etymological and historical proof that they are I show him prove that the word more is related to the names of the world's first men in several cultures and vernacular. I will revisit some of these claims in this presentation. We find the name more in reference to whom the Greeks called Ethiopians, that is what we know now as Asia and Africa, mentioned in ancient records of the Chaldeans under the name Muruk. The Hindus knew our ancient forefathers by the name Meru. The Greeks knew our ancient ancestors as the Meros, and the Egyptians, who kept the best records, recorded themselves as Ta Mer Al, with the Ta meaning land of and the Al denoting plurality, as in the name of the people collectively, which, as you can see by the glyph sequence, differs from Ta Meri, which means the beloved land, and the glyph sequences themselves prove this. We can safely assume that the Uk in mer -uk, the U in mer -u, and the Ops in mer -ops is merely there in that ancient vernacular to represent plurality. Early 18th century scholars have intimated that all of these names also have a connection with Mero or Meroe of Cushite fame. Based on my intense hours of research, I have concluded without doubt that the name Moore derives from these vernacular designations to the word that we have in English today is more. The name that stands out the most is the name Maru, as it is said to be the original home of the Sabian, and the Hindu Puranas called the people of Maru the first men of the world. Please review my blog on Google entitled The Lost Tribe of Sabas, Reconciling the Ancient Moorish History, where I give a more concise breakdown of the Sabians in this regard. As usual, we cross-reference these claims to find if there is any other factual or even opinionated basis when drawing such conclusions where professional etymologists are uncertain, or where Afrocentric scholars and their cheerleaders who hold the same exact sentiments that they do are being dishonest. In an early book on the Moors, Written in 1841 by an author named Florian, we read, The origin of the Moors or Mauritanians is like that of most other ancient nations, obscure and in the information we possess concerning their history, confusedly mingled with fables. The fact, however, appears to be established that Asiatic immigrations were, from the earliest times, made into Africa. In addition to this, Historians of remote ages speak of a certain Melik Yafrik, king of Arabia Felix, who conducted a people called Sebai into Libya, made himself master of that country, established his followers there, and gave it the name Africa. It is from these Sabians or Sebai that the principal Moorish tribes pretend to trace their descent. The derivation of the name Moors is also supposed in some degree to confirm the impression that they originally came from Asia. Maru was anciently situated in Asia. But without enlarging upon these ancient statements, let it suffice to say that nearly certain grounds exist for the belief that the original Moors were Arabians. In confirmation of this impression, we find that during every period of their existence of the race, the descendants of the primitive inhabitants of Mauritania have, like the Arabs, been divided into distinct tribes and like them have pursued a wild wandering mode of existence. Notice that he said, the derivation of the name Moors is also supposed in some degree to confirm the impression that they originally came from Asia. Maru in the mythos is situated in Asia. Some have claimed to pinpoint it, but my research has given a different conclusion. Nevertheless, it is a known fact that these Moors in particular 
came from Arabia, which is in fact a part of Asia according to the parlance that we Moorish Americans used, and that was used in those days to describe Asia and Asiatics, which simply means one coming from the East. A quick point to note is that Malik Yafrik is where we get the name Africa from, from a Moor, one of the original Arabians, and not from some European named Scipio Africanus. Let us look at what Gerald Massey, famed and critically acclaimed Egyptologist had to say in this regard in his lectures pertaining to the claim that I have just made relating to the name Tamarau to actually mean the Moor. He says that the name of Tameri is the land of Meru, whence Meru, and that the ancient Mero or Meroe was once the capital of the two Egypts under this name. Thus we have a Morty from a country northwest in Africa answering to the Maori name of the northwest as Maru. This shifts the duality of Meru or Meru from north and south to north and west, just as it was shifted when the hinder part was called Ket, as the place of going down instead of the north. This name for a land lying northwest of the African center always reckoning from the south would deposit the names as the Mori or Moors went farther north into Spain or Zephon. From these and other data may be drawn the inference that the Maori people were self-named as the immigrants who came from the northwest, one name of which is Maru, Egyptian Meru, Meroe, or the Meru. The Maori name is that of the later Moors of a land under the Tropic of Cancer and northwest of the equator, as well as of Ethiopia, the typical birthplace and the name of the Moors found on the Egyptian monuments is written Mori or Maori. The Egyptian Mori dwelt in the northwestern lands lying between the Atlantic and Mediterranean, and their name is identifiable with that of the Maori whose traditions derive from the Northwest. So when you hear these Afrocentrists say that there is no more on the monuments of Egypt and that no Egyptologist has ever shown such, please reference them to Gerald Massey's lecture. Budge, in his An Egyptian Hieroglyphic Dictionary, Volume 1, page 311, shows the same exact thing, that the word Meru means a mountain, and the fact that the Egyptians named the pyramid M-R or Mer or Meri by some pronunciations is more proof of this claim as the Egyptian pyramids are nothing more than stylized representations of Meru, man-made mountains, and we find pyramids all over this globe as the mythos, if we can call it that, was once uniform. We find many names which include this same MR root in ancient Egyptian glyphs, as we have it as Mer, as shown in the glyph prior, Tamarau, to show that it is what the Egyptians called themselves to denote rulers and chiefs and even sheiks. So when the Hindus state that the world's first people are the men of Meru, meaning the mythical mountain, it is no doubt left as to where we get this most elusive name from, from our people. There is, in just about every ancient mythical account, a mountain held to be sacred. The Bible bears this out. The Quran of Muhammad bears this out as well. I am of the opinion that only the ruling class, the educated, knew from historical precedents that we were more. A name no doubt preserved with the scientific and mathematical knowledge that built the great temples in Egypt to the Alhambra in Spain. And this is why Mr. Rashidi's teacher, Ivan Van Sertima, said, Today, we are dealing with the science of the Moors. Who are the Moors? This is one of the most difficult of historical questions. And in fact, this is the most neglected chapter in black history. But they refused to look any further into these claims. They were just content with the Moors being the black people because that is what they think that they are from years of programming, of course. Now that we have simply proven that Moor does not mean black, not by my own words or interpretations, but by the very etymological definitions given by professionals 
and the fact that we can also use the professional opinions of scholars who were not Afrocentric to the very walls of Egypt and other ancient cultures then I for one have no doubt about my origins and ancestry as Prophet Noble Drew Ali said to us you are what your forefathers were without a doubt or contradiction he also said that according to all true and divine records of the human race there is no Negro black or colored race attached to the human family so when this Afrocentric scholar meaning Renoko Rashidi says that more comes from the Greek and Latin words that literally means black or scorched we see that this is simply not the case and that this scholar needs to step his etymological game up lest he be accused of spreading misinformation to the masses who follow him in the way that I am accusing him right now so it is settled Moore has absolutely no etymological trace to the English and German word black or in any word in ancient vernacular meaning black until ancient Greeks in the late Greek period decided to call our people blacks this is why I ask and challenge the whole field who teach that we are a black people and black gods and black power and black nationalism to simply show me one source where our people called themselves a black people prior to coming in contact with the pale skin nations of Europe if more means black because Europeans said that more means black then every tribal name of our people on this planet means black too we need to stop with this foolishness this brings us to the next quote where he Renoko Rashidi says that the word more is similar to the Greek word Ethiopian which meant people burnt by the Sun aka black people this is even more misleading again we get into another case of somebody has to be right and somebody has to be wrong Prophet Noble Drew Ali teaches us for instance that Ethiopia means something divided while Rashidi and a host of other Afrocentrists believe that it means burnt or scorched faces which means black people so let us see who is right first I want you all to look at the etymology of the word Ethia late 14th century from Latin Ethiopes, Ethiopian Negro from Greek Ethiops perhaps from Athian to burn plus ops face reference Ethiops fiery looking later sunburn notice it says perhaps from Athian to burn plus ops face based on my personal study of words and their roots when perhaps is added into the tracing of a word it means that the etymologists are simply not sure this means that Ethiopia does not necessarily mean burnt face and there is really nothing in the etymon that proves this as I cited in my last video black according to science means death I will read the commentary connected with the etymological trace of Ethiops where it says and I quote who the Homeric Ethiopians were is a matter of doubt the poet elsewhere speaks of two divisions of them one dwelling near the rising the other near the setting of the Sun both having embrowned visages from their proximity to that luminary and both leading a blissful existence because living amid a flood of light and as a natural concomitant of blissful existence blameless and pure and free from every kind of moral defilement so again let us define what embrowned visages mean which is the very description that Homer gave the more and brown to make brown or dusky to darken visage the face or facial expression of a person countenance appearance aspect so it is clear that in brown visages meaning brown features clearly shows that the early Greeks did not see this people as black people but as dark brown people who were kissed by the Sun so if Homer who took actual people and made myths out of them as we will show shortly said that these Ethiops had in brown visages meaning brown faces or appearances then how can Mr. Rashidi, Chancellor Williams etc 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 
blindly proclaim that the name Ethiopia means people burnt or scorched by the sun to which makes them a black people. How? Do we not know the differences between black and brown anymore? Are we that blinded by this European psychology that taught that our brown skins are actually black that we refuse to use our own eyes? This is mental necrosis that I refer to in the black according to science means death video. The Afrocentrists and those that promote this black man theory are doing exactly what the Europeans did to us, causing us to use our own minds to trick our own eyes. In doing my research on the Moors and their other synonym, Berber, as the etymology shows, I came across this book called Researches into the Physical History of Mankind, Physical Ethnography of the African Races by James Kyles Pritchard, who says on page 172, section 1 of the Barabra or Berberines, the people who inhabit the valley of the Nile above Egypt and from that country to Sinan give themselves the appellation of Berber. By the Arabs, they are termed Nuba. The same people in Egypt where they are well known are called Berberines. Denon has thus described them. He says, their skins is of a shining and jet black, exactly similar to that of antique bronzes. They have not the smallest resemblance of the Negroes in the western parts of Africa. Their eyes are deep set and sparkling, with the brows hanging over, the nose pointed, the nostrils are large, the mouth wide, the lips of moderate thickness, and the hair and beard in small quantity and hanging in little locks. Did you catch that where he said their skin is of a shining and jet black, exactly similar to that of antique bronzes? Is this not a clear case of sleight of hand? How can they be jet black but of the same color of antique bronzes? Here is what antique bronzes look like. This is what jet black looks like. Do you not see the difference? Do you not see that your skin, Mr. Rashidi, and the skin of your people is not black at all, but that this was merely an act of European psychology to disconnect us from our great and illustrious history? I have come across many men who were very learned and lacked the one vital necessity to true intellect, and that is the faculty of reasoning. Now on to this Ethiopia definition. Prophet Noble Drew Ali asks and answers in our questionnaire the following. What does Ethiopian mean? Answer. Ethiopia means something divided. In chapter 47 verse 3 of the Moorish Holy Quran we cite. The inhabitants of Africa are the descendants of the ancient Canaanites from the land of Canaan. Old man Cush and his family are the first inhabitants of Africa who came from the land of Canaan. His father Ham and his family were second. Then came the word Ethiopia, which means the demarcation line of the dominion of Amexa, the first true and divine name of Africa, the dividing of the land between the father and the son. Let us see what the ancients have to say in this regard. Strabo, Greek geographer and historian who, in volume one, Book 1, chapter 2, page 111 to 115 of his geography says, The same mistake is made by those who say that Homer is not acquainted with the isthmus that lies between the Egyptian Sea and the Arabian Gulf, and that he is in error when he speaks of the Ethiopians that are sundered in twain, the furthermost of men. On page 113 he cites him again, where he says, The poet says, the Ethiopians that are sundered in twain, the father most of men. He continues, Now, just as these Ethiopians on our side of Oceanus, who face the south throughout the whole length of the inhabited land, are called the most remote of the one group of people, since they dwell on the shores of Oceanus, so too, Crates thinks, we must conceive that on the other side of Oceanus also there are certain Ethiopians, the most remote of the other group of peoples in the temperate zone, since they dwell on the shores of this same Oceanus, and that they are in two groups and are 
sundered in twain by Oceanus. And trying to understand the claims of Homer and those who agree with this mythical demarcation line, Strabo says, for what difference does it make whether we say on our side of Oceanus there are two groups of Ethiopians, some in the east and some in the west, or both in the east and in the west? He would continue, and this is the meaning also of the words. On his way from the Ethiopians he espied Odysseus from afar from the mountains of the Solimi, which is equivalent to saying from the regions of the south. For he does not mean that Solimi and Pisidia, but as I said before, he invents a people of the same name whom he depicts as occupying the same position relatively to the sailor on his raft and the people to the south of him who would be the Ethiopians as the Pisidians occupy relatively to the Pontus and to the Ethiopians that lied beyond Egypt. The above alone is pretty much clear and definitive that Strabo, interpreting Homer, literally has proven that the Ethiopians are merely people living on either side of a pseudo-geographical line, Oceanus, and thus Homer's use of the phrase sundered in twain, which literally means split up in two, was one that he invented to describe the ancient Moors on either side of this land to go along with his poem. Just like the pseudonym Black, as is used today by the unsuspected masses, that name, Ethiopian, stuck with the people regardless of what their tribal and national names were. At the time, the whole of Africa was called Libya, and all Libyans were called Moors. I do not seek to enlarge Strabo's debate or critique of his contemporaries, but to simply show and prove the fact that Homer himself said and meant sundered and twain, split in two when speaking about the characters that he made up called the Atheops. For greater context, please consult the source of this work. So what now? Will Renoko Rashidi make a response proving his claims or put up another Facebook post for his cheerleaders who believe that because he is a scholar that traveled the world that his words should be accepted over mine whether he is telling the truth or not. Being that none will accept any of my public debates, I am hereby calling Renoko Rashidi out to do a lecture at least where he definitively and absolutely backs up his claim with etymological traces that proves that the word more means black. I am going to keep issuing challenges to those who promote this European slave label of black. Those who falsely believe that we are a black people and that we are black gods. Don't get it twisted. I am for the uplifting of my people, but in this so-called conscious community, I am here for the intellectual battle. And if you can show and prove, the stage awaits us. Love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice.